topic is distal shoe space maintainer now why it is known as distal shoe now over here as you can see this is a shoe so now this is the part so the distal shoe it has this mesial part and the distal part so now over here as you can compare so this is the upper part of your shoe over here and this becomes the lower part that is your sole area of your shoes so now you can see it looks similarly like the shoes but this shoe's design is on the distal part of it so this is known as distal shoe space maintainer now distal shoe space maintainer is it is a fixed type of space maintainer and it has this distal extension so it can also be known as a distal extension or a distal shoe type of space maintainer so over here this is the exactly how distal shoe space maintainer look like so this is the mesial part and the distal part of this so this distal part it has this extension which is going gingivally so this is a distal shoe type of space maintainer now it is also known as intra alveolar or eruption guidance appliance now why it is known as intra alveolar so intra alveolar is nothing but within the alveolus so now now just to show you the difference between how band and loop and distal shoe is so this is how the band and loop it looks like so the loop of this space maintainer it is above the gingiva so it is just placed on the gingiva but now in this distal shoe this now you can see this extension it is going within the alveolus and because of that it is known as intra alveolus so you can see this extension right now over here or it is also known as eruption guidance appliance because it helps like it guides the permanent first molar for its eruption so it is known as eruption guidance appliance so this is the first distal shoe it was reported by willet in 1932 but now it is rarely used the commonly used one it is described by roach in 1942 what is the difference between this roach and willet so the most like a basic difference which lies in this roach and willet is the gingival extension so this is the gingival extension so the basic or the main difference it lies over here now in willet so willet like space maintainer it was given in 1932 it was made up of cast gold because of this cast gold it is of a increased cost and there is difficulty in the preparation when you are making this willet type of space maintainer there was difficulty in the tooth preparations and it is more complicated fabrication procedure so it has more complicated fabrication procedures and because of all these three reasons it is rarely used now and this extension now as i said the main difference lies over this extension so now in this it has a bar type of extension over here now you can see it has this bar type of extension whereas in roach it has this v shaped extension so this is a v shaped extension and roach he advocated a crown or a band appliance with distal intra gingival extension now why it is this crown or band now this is now you can see there this is a band which is put on the abutment but now if for example now if your abutment it is deeply carious so in that case you are using a crown now in this if there's problem with the abutment so in that you can use a crown so he advocated a crown or a band appliance with distal intra gingival extension and this extension it is a v shape gingival extension and because of this it provides broader surface and hence it prevents the rotation now the distal surface of the second primary molar it provides guide for the unerupted first permanent molar now as you know like your primary arch it has this five teeth that are the central incisor lateral incisor cuspid first molar and second molar now behind this second molar your first permanent molar it erupts and like in place of this primary first and second molars there is the eruption of the premolars so you know, the distal surface of the primary of the second so the distal surface of your second primary molar it provides a guide for the unerupted first permanent molar so this surface it provides a guide for your unerupted permanent molar so that it is erupted properly in its position but now when the second molar second primary molar it is removed prior to the eruption of the first permanent molar in that case you are using this appliance so that you are guiding the eruption of the first permanent molar and hence it is known as a eruption guidance appliance and this is the main indication of this and you are using or you are using this appliance just to prevent the undesirable mesial migration so for example now if your primary second molar it is absent so in that case your permanent first molar it will shift or it will migrate mesially in its like eruption so to prevent that we are using now the indication is if there is early loss or the removal of the second primary molar prior to the eruption of the first permanent molar and this becomes the prime indication now this is how it looks so your like first permanent molar 
it is not yet erupted and the second primary molar it is lost so it is prematurely lost so this becomes the indication for your shoe for your distal shoe space maintainer now in maxillary arch you can use if there is bilateral space loss so two appliances it may it can be used on the two on the two sides so this is the main indication so you have to remember if the second primary molar it is not there but in that case if your permanent molar it is erupted for example if it is erupted so if this permanent molar it is erupted so in that case you can use like band and loop also in which you can provide the band on this permanent molar but now in this case where your second molar is also not there and your permanent first molar is also not there in that case you are using this distal shoe now what are the contraindications so first if there is inadequate abutment due to multiple loss you cannot use this if there is poor oral hygiene if there is poor patient and parent cooperation if they are not cooperative again you cannot use this if there is congenitally missing first molar so this is the main contraindication contraindication if the permanent first molar it is missing congenitally and the, in some medical conditions such as congenital heart disease blood dyscreases then rheumatic fever diabetes all this condition it becomes contraindications for the distal shoe space maintainer because now as we have seen this is a intra alveolar type of space maintainer so it becomes so if there are any medical conditions if the medical if the patient he is medically compromised so you cannot use such type of space maintainer in that patient now what is the classification so it is classified basically into two fixed and removable now fixed is divided again into two functional and non functional functional is when it has the artificial tooth on it so it is doing function other functions also like mastications so non functional is the one which do not have the artificial tooth on it so the functional advantage is it is durable it maintains the occlusion because there is this tooth which is present and it can be used after the removal of the extension disadvantage is it is costly it is time consuming it is difficult to construct and to adjust now in non functional the advantage is it is easy to fabricate whereas the functional one the disadvantage is it is difficult to construct and the non functional obviously now you are not like using a tooth over it so it becomes the advantage it is a it is easy to fabricate it is low cost then single abutment disadvantage it is more so there are more breakage chances in this there is it is less retentive and a new appliance is required after the eruption of the tooth so these are the like classification of now how are you going to fabricate this so first is now you are going to use the primary molar as a abutment and the stainless steel band it is so on this first primary molar you are going to put that band and if the morphology of the tooth it does not permit the band then you are going to use the crown if for example if your primary first molar it is grossly destructed so in that case you cannot use the stainless steel like band so in that case you are using a crown and over that you are using the stainless steel band then what you are doing is then you are taking a alginate impression with that band on the tooth after that the band it is removed from the tooth and it is placed in the impression because now you have taken this alginate impression so the band impression is also like so the impression it also has this band impression on it so what you are going to do is the band is then removed and you are going to place it in the impression and after that you are going to pour a stone model out of it and after that you are going to make this loop and then you are going to solder it then you are going to solder the loop and the band so the primary function of the distal shoe is to guide the eruption of the path of the first permanent molar so to fulfill this purpose successfully we should have an understanding of normal path of eruption of the maxillary and the mandibular first permanent molar because of this the distal extension of the appliance it will differ for the upper and the lower arches so this is the distal extension of it so this distal extension it will differ on the path through which the maxillary and the mandibular first molar they erupt so now in case of lower arch the contact area of this distal extension it should have a slight lingual position over the crest of the alveolar ridge in order to engage the mesial contact area of the permanent molar so this is the main point that you need to remember like the distal extension it should be slightly in the lingual position so this distal extension it should be slightly in lingual position in the lower teeth and it is labially so it is placed facially in the maxillary teeth and it is important to prevent the rotation of the tooth and the appliance the next is the width so if no adequate width it is provided the tooth it may slip so you need to provide like proper width to it 
so it should be approximately show it should be made approximately the width of the contact area the next is the length of this distal extension so this the, this one so this is your horizontal bar this is your vertical bar so this is vertically placed so this is horizontal placed so the length of this is so first what you're going to do is first you're going to measure the second premolar so for example if your second premolar is going to be get extracted but it is not get extracted so that in that case you're just going to ideally measure it so it like determines the length of this horizontal bar so you have to like make it proper but now for example if your second premolar it is already extracted then in that case what you're going to do is now you're going to measure the measurement so you're going to measure this distance so the distance on the radiograph so what you're going to do is you're going to measure the distance between the distal surface of the first primary molar so you're going to measure the distance from this distal surface of your primary first molar and the mesial surface of your permanent first molar so this is the measurement that you're going to do so this becomes this measurement so the this carries the disadvantage of the appliance being overextended especially in the maxillary arch but this has a disadvantage if you are not going to do this properly then it is going to have this disadvantage that it will be overextended so the best way to measure the mesial distal width of the second primary molar on the opposite side so you are going to just measure the mesial distal width of the second primary molar on the opposite side so it like determines the length of your distal extension that is your horizontal bar and the last point for the appliance fabrication is the depth of this gingival extension that is your vertical bar so this gingival extension it should be 1 mm below the mesial marginal ridge of the tooth so it should be 1 mm now you can see over here so it is 1 mm below the mesial marginal so this is your margin of your tooth so it is almost 1 mm below it but for example if you are fabricating the depth of the gingival extension too long then what so the outcome will be it will injure the developing second premolar now if this like vertical bar it is too long so obviously it will like injure this second molar second premolar but now if this is short so in that case the permanent molar it can erupt underneath the appliance so this is the drawback if it is long or it is or if it is too short so you have to ideally prepare it such that it is 1 mm below the mesial that is your mesial of the unerupted permanent molar so it is mesial marginal ridge so it is 1 mm below the mesial marginal ridge so this is all about the fabricate what are the advantages so this is the only space maintainer which can be used if there is premature loss of the primary second molar before the eruption of the permanent molar now the disadvantages are it can cause deviation of the permanent tooth bud if it is not fabricated properly then it may permit tipping then it may interfere with the epithelialization of the socket it can cause infection because now it is intra alveolar so it can be not used in specific patients now as we have seen like it is contraindicated in medically compromised patients the retention is not good and the construction it is difficult last part of this is the modifications of it now for example now we have seen we are taking the support so we are putting that band over the primary first molar but now for example if your primary first molar is also absent then what are you going to do so this becomes the first modification that is you're going to combine the lingual arch so i'm i have already explained about this lingual arch so what you're going to do is you're going to combine the lingual arch and the distal shoe appliance and it was suggested for the use of the patient in whom both the primary molars are lost and so this is the first like indication why you're using this combination one and the second becomes the if the patient they have strong gag reflex which prevents the use of the removal appliance so now removal appliances now we have when we are making the removal appliances and if the patient they have strong gag reflex so in that case you cannot use this re removal appliance so in that case you are using this combination of the lingual arch and the distal shoe so in this what you are going to do is now for example what you are doing is now your left over here the left first and the second primary molar they are missing and your first permanent molar is yet to erupt then what you are going to do is you are going to fabricate a band over the right side of your molar so in this the right primary second molar it is fitted with a band so over here this is fitted with a band so over here this is the missing area and you are fitting it so you are fitting a band on the opposite side of the second premolar and then you are going to like make a stainless steel crown over this left canine left primary canine the area in which it is missing so in the area where all where both the molars they are missing in that 
what you're going to do is you are going to make this crown so you are making a stainless steel crown over the canine on the missing side and you are placing this band on the side in which the molars they are present then what you are going to do is then you are going to a orthodontic wire it is placed and it is extended from the soldered lingual connection on the band to the canine in the typical fashion as of the lingual arch so this is how your lingual arch it looks like so lingually you are just like soldering this all part so you're soldering this crown and this band lingually through the singular of your anterior teeth so this is how it looks so this is the combination of a lingual arch and the distal shoe so now after that now you have fabricated this much portion so over here now this is this stainless steel crown over here there is a band now you have connected this both area with this lingual arch and the last part is now where you're going to so it is extended back to the unerupted molar so this is how your distal shoe it looks like so after that you are going to fabricate this distal shoe design and then it is soldered to this canine crown now why you are using this lingual arch because there are two teeth which are missing and your canine it is not that strong to give that support so in that case you are just extending it onto the other side through this lingual arch so this is the first modification the next is the placing the loops in the horizontal arm so you are placing some loops in the horizontal arm which permits the precise attachments which are needed for the accurate placement and the next one is the space maintained is placed after the signs of eruption of the first molars they are seen so in that what you are doing is the vertical extension in this it is short and it is not placed intra alveolarly in fact it just touches the mesial surface of the erupting first molar and the next modification is the gingival saddle appliance so these all are the modifications of your distal shoe the first one is like the most commonly ones which is used because there are like many things in which your molar permanent molar is not erupted and like or like both the primary molars they are lost prematurely so this become the modification of it this was all about the distal shoe i hope you found this video helpful thank you so much